I'm not going to talk about myself tonight. And I'm certainly not going to talk about a department which I'm sure you all know far more than I do. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the political situation, nor am I going to make any suggestions as to how it should be improved. <laughs> I'm not going to make any after-dinner jokes, because I don't know any. And so, as it is perfectly obvious that I have nothing at all to say, I'm going to sit down, much to your relief. <laughs> Old Bly's turning on the charm tonight. He wants to be the popular Three chairman of the National Export Board. For Mr. Eric Amberley, Member of Parliament. Joint you want Parliamentary to meet Secretary to the Ministry of Commerce. I'm surprised you aren't at Caswell Bly's little junketing tonight. I doubt whether it surprises you at all, Peter. What's it for, do you know? Well, I think he'd describe it as creating a happy relationship between the new chairman and his colleagues. Used to be called a works outing. How do you feel about him getting the chairman, Jim? Probably much the same as you people at the Treasury feel. How do we people at the Treasury feel? Probably much as I do. Well, that's nice, whatever it is. How long does your department give the existence of the NEB as a separate entity? Not to mention the minister who seems to be doing everything in his power to undermine your superior authority. You shouldn't pay too much attention to the more spectacular correspondence of the more popular daily paper. Even if they feel as we do. I have to go. Can I give you a lift? Ellis, <laughs> <laughs> I must have had much more to drink than I thought. Oh, you didn't have all that much, really. Well, I must have done, otherwise why on earth would I be out here at this time of night with a man I've only just met? I understand it happens all the time. Well, does it happen to you all the time? Mm, no. Oh, me. Well, perhaps we're underprivileged. Not tonight. No. Mm. Well, thank you for a splendid evening. Not at all. Lunch tomorrow at the five. About one thirty. Good. Good night, Peter. Good night. All right, this is uh, Drive me to Hampstead, will you? I'm 43. My name, as you know, is David May. I work at the Treasury. I'm divorced three years. I have one son, age six. And you're probably going to ask me back to your flat for coffee. You passed my flat ages ago. And I can't stand that awkward silence after the girl says no. That's probably what holds most Englishmen back. Still, I'm glad that's what it was. Otherwise, I'd have worried. Why, I hadn't been asked. <laughs> Thank you, Bridget. No public. <laughs> what? Well, it's a state between sleeping and waking when one's half awake. No pumping. And hypnogogic describes that rather drowsy status before one falls asleep. That's when you get those curious short dreams which are more like hallucinations. No. Got you. <laughs> you can just write them down <laughs> for me. Oh, yeah. No, I'll. Um, well, at least then. No. Awkward silence if I were to invite you to my flat for coffee? Probably not. You can write those words down for me.
Your telephone's ringing. Yes. Well, I must go. Ah, oh, my coat, yes. Thank you for bringing me home. Not at all. You're not going to answer it, are you? No. I see. At this time of night, one always knows who's ringing, I suppose, doesn't one? Um... Thank you for the coffee. If I were to ring you to invite you to dinner, would I also run the risk of not being answered? We're a carnation, so I know it's you. All right. You realize, of course, the extent of the groundwork Kenneth did in Africa while you were in Brussels? Only what you tell me. Well, it was quite a lot. Good. Will you ring the National Export Board? I want to speak to Miss Weldon. Yes, Sir John. I should imagine his idea is to make a cast-iron case for going into Africa rather than Europe and then using it to bludgeon the board. I saw what you might call a prospectus he's been putting together. It's quite impressive. Fine. It'll save me getting one out. I thought you were concentrating on this European consortium. Well, I expect we shall also be going into Africa later. Hmm. You know, John, I get the feeling he's going to use it to bludgeon the export board, too. So that if there's a choice to be made, the weight will be on his side. Well, I doubt very much if the National Export Board, as presently constituted, will go on carrying much weight for anyone for much longer, if I know anything about it, but it'll keep him occupied. Morning. Morning, Kenneth. Did you want to see me? Have you dropped in for a quick round of the farmers in the dell? How are you this morning? Yeah. I thought I'd bring something along to show you. I thought it was only fair that you should know some of the things that I was doing while you were away. Your African travel brochure. Seems to me, Kenneth, you've got something like a lion in your lap. Don't brush it off onto me. Well, I didn't think it was possible that you wouldn't have heard about it. So, um... You brought it along before it got round that you were hiding it from me. As I said, I thought it was only fair that you should be brought up to date. That's very pretty. I'll have a look at it later. Well, I can't read it now. It looks the size of the complete works of George Bernard Shaw. I promise you, Kenneth, that I will read it later. Is your father in his office this morning? Um, yes, I believe he's seen some treasury people about who will be the NEB's new secretary. Oh, yes, that's still vacant, of course, isn't it? I, I don't want to press you, John, but I would be grateful if you could look at that pretty soon. Mm. See, there's quite a lot of information in it that um, one would have to assimilate. I'm sure. And I feel that it's something that you and I should discuss before I... Yes? I'm afraid I can't get hold of Miss Weldon, Sir John. Uh, she isn't in her office. Thank you. I was saying, I think it's something that you and I ought to discuss before I present it to the board and possibly show it to the NEB. Get it! For God's sake! Stop droning on and on about Africa. Commerce is something which isn't run in the indulgence of personal whims. It's the pursuit of a rational policy. Which policy we've already been through. I've told you I'll give you Africa. So for God's sake, have a little patience before that time comes. It uh, wasn't a terribly good morning for it. Now, he still thinks he's Britain's special envoy. Talk about ambassadorial status. I'll give you Africa, my God. I've no doubt he will. It's done like that, you know. Oh, thank you. We'll order in a few minutes. And uh, why should you imagine the Treasury is unhappy about the NEB? Oh, for heaven's sake, Peter. The NEB has been encroaching more and more into areas which are usually handled by your people. It does appear to have many of the characteristics of the whiteies in Constance Witcher, Virginia Creeper. In fact, it's reached the point where your minister finds it difficult to speak civilly to theirs. Is this the murmur that's going round Brussels? You know exactly what's going to happen as well as I do. Let us say that Caswell Byers, chairman of the board, 
ask for extended powers. Not only to drag industrialists and the unions on the mat like naughty schoolboys, but also to make non-cooperation punishable by law. It will be a massive withdrawal of support. Collapse of Stout Party? Exactly. And do you think there will be a call for extended power? I should be very surprised if Caswell does not ask for the orb and scepter. He always said he was against it. I take it you are staying on the National Export Board? Yes. Oh, forgive me for appearing dense. I doubt when the NEB collapses that the Treasury will collapse at the same time, will it? And I don't want to have to scramble over the rubble to get to the fountainhead. Very prettily phrased. <laughs> oh, Don, this is just what I used to miss. What? Driving around London at lunchtime, having you take me out to lunch. Ah, Pamela, many's the lonely sandwich I've nibbled in crummy little snack bars while you've been away. Really? I'm glad you took it so badly. Now you're back, I'm on a diet. Well, I'm not having any of that nonsense. You'll eat luxuriantly with me or I'll find somebody else to take me out. To London. Do you miss Brussels? About half as much as I expect Susan Weldon misses that flat in Paris. Yes. Well, um, where do you want to go? It's a very plush place for a civil servant to lunch at. Huh? Oh, I don't usually eat here as a rule. I'm just trying to impress you. Oh, I see. Well, I'm impressed. You are. Hmm, fine. And how are things at the NEB? Well, a bit fraught just now, what with the change of chairman and no secretary to the board. Hmm. How's the great casual Bly settling in? I should think he's taken to it like a duck to soup. <laughs> he's being a bit cagey about how he's going to approach it, at least as far as we're concerned, but I expect he's just easing himself in. Doesn't it make it a bit embarrassing for you, him being chairman? Embarrassing? How do you mean? Oh, I didn't mean that exactly. I meant um, awkward and disturbing. Well, two changes of chairman, two changes of secretary in what, a year? I bet it must take some sorting out. Oh, yes, well, <laughs> one copes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, then, whoa, now that would be embarrassing to turn up slightly tight. Half a bottle of this isn't going to make you see red mice in the fighting cabinets. I thought you were going to invite me to dinner. I felt if I were to ring you to invite you to dinner, there was a chance the number would be engaged. Why should you think that? You know. What? Well, it usually happens with the attractive single women. You've probably heard quite this a This impudent bit. little wine is meant to imbue one with a reckless feeling of euphoria. If you start being serious, I'll send it back. You might as well say, David. Say what? What you have heard. Oh, it's, uh, It was just... Something somebody said about you and this chap. Uh, John Wilder. Yes, John Wilder. Well, it has absolutely nothing to do with me. In any case, that... Uh, oh, God, I shall send this bloody wine back in a minute. If you'd like to ring to invite me to dinner tonight, I'll guarantee the line isn't engaged. I'll be the one wearing the green carnation. Oysters? Oysters is naughty. And when you're on a diet, what isn't? Not that kind of naughty. Hmm. Aphrodisiac din-dins and back to the office can only come under the heading of useless masochism. Why don't you have something dreadfully fattening and get your sense of sin in a middle-aged way? Charming. <laughs> I didn't mean that, Don. You have your dozen oysters and then go and spend 40 illuminating minutes in a strip club. You have a very dreary idea of masculine sin, haven't you? Well, I thought that was the idea of masculine lunchtime sin. Bosoms and brown ale. Oh, delicious. I adore brown ale. <laughs> I'll leave it a couple of minutes, will you? Are you going to this cocktail party at the Italian Embassy? I expect so. What's it all about? Oh, job catching for contracts on this new Italian development. It's going to be a massive European consortium. How uninteresting. Well, there'll be free drinks. Yes, and jolly chats to wives. I suppose Bly's is after a big slice of it. No, I don't think John's got all that sewn up. You know, making him special envoy to Brussels meant that he had his foot in the door first. In other words, we're just making another diplomatic appearance. 
I suppose it must be pretty tedious. Boring. Oh, Tom. Why is everything so incredibly boring? Yes, I think I might have a dozen oysters. Now that really is interesting. You take a long lunch? Occasionally. I don't wish you would hurry up and get some promotion. Then you might indent for a more comfortable chair. Have you been here long? No longer than I was prepared to wait. No, I suppose you wouldn't do that, would you? Not a bit snappish. Rotten lunch? No. I rang you last night. There was no reply. Oh, I probably hadn't got home. At 1.15. Then I expect I was asleep. Oh, you are snappish, aren't you? And lying. I also tried to get hold of you this morning. You were not available. I was in a meeting. So was I. What do you want, John? A row? No. Because I'd rather we didn't have it in my office. I have them in my office every day. I can quite see why. Well, why have you come round, John? Because obviously I cannot rely on the telephone or you to be in when I call. I never have been prepared just so to... So I thought I'd call in on my way to see our new chairman. Oh, it wasn't a special journey. To tell you that I want to see you tonight. Well, I'm afraid I can't. I've already About met other... About eight o'clock. I'm trying to tell you, John, I can't. Put I've it already... off. I want to see you tonight. All right, John, I'll see you tonight. Hmm. But make it about seven, would you? Very pretty. <laughs> exactly the same words John used. You'll be disappointed to hear. And interesting. Of course, I can't say much about it from... Uh... Just a glance. Obviously, we've done a lot of work. It's about... Uh, about the size of the complete works of Bernard Shaw, as John put it. Well, I was going to say the Oxford Dictionary of Quotations, but everyone to his taste. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think, Father, that you and John have more in common than you imagine. You both are really only interested in what you want to do. Are we? Like a great many of this country's splendid industrialists. Oh, you all scuttle around like blue-eared flies to turn over a quarter of a million or extend your dubious sense of power. But present you with an abstract idea, and you'll rush into your clubs as if a septic tank had overflowed. But a nasty image. Well, what do you think George Stevenson was selling when he walked 30 miles barefoot to sell his locomotive? Until he'd sold it, it was an abstract idea. Now, I sometimes think that you people and your accountants have decided that you can take it with you. And your greatest concern in life is how to work out a way of getting it up there. I will read it, Ken. I promise. I want it presented to the NEB. All right. I'm not doing it entirely from a desire for commercial advantage. I really do believe we have to do it. Very well. I'll see that it's put before them. Now, in the meantime... In the I... meantime, I'm going to see the Megalian ambassador. They may be more immediately interested. Yes? Sir John Wilder to see Mr. Bly. Thank you. Ask him to come in. Hello, John. Good afternoon. All. Oh. This is the NEB, isn't it? It looks more like a board meeting at Bly's. Well, I'm just off. All right, Ken, I'll see to this. I'll be seeing you. All. I see you got one, too. Yes, I think it makes... I've done a very thorough job on it. It makes very interesting reading. Well, John, what can I do for you? Well, I thought I'd call in, since I was here, to ask how you're getting on with appointing a new secretary to the board. Why are you so interested? I'm not especially. But I can't think of anything else you might be doing here that I could ask you about. No. Well, not so well, as a matter of fact. Most of the men uh, recommended so far seem to be um, rather toothless. Well, don't ask for anybody too ambitious. 
Remember what happened to Sefton Kemp? Well, if the board is going to do his job at all, he's going to have to have somebody with a bit of fire in his guts. That sounds as if you're going to ask for extended powers. Why not? Because I thought you were opposed to that idea. Well, I'm not now. My job is to make the board work. I assume you'll oppose my asking for extended powers. Oh, I don't think so, Caswell. You have to do just as you see fit. And our job is to give you every assistance. Oh, good afternoon. I have an appointment with His Excellency. Uh, Mr. Bly. Oh, Captain Z. Yes. Uh, but suppose you'd better come in. Thank you. You'd have to excuse all this, I'm afraid. Oh. Was His Excellency not expecting me? Oh, yeah. Lucky is here. He's been recalled. His wife and family left last week. He stayed on to, to have a last look at London. Oh. Now, there's a chair behind the slot somewhere if you want to sit down. Uh, no, it's all right. No, I have to tidy them up a bit anyway. The waiting room is an even more of a mess. <laughs> Is His Excellency being recalled permanently? Yes, thank heavens. I'm surprised he lasted this long. He's a peasant. That's the trouble with us emerging countries, Mr. Bly. The right sort of diplomats don't always emerge at the same rate. Now, the new ambassador is first class, very sound. Quite a different kettle of fish to this e idiot. I he got um, his job so, through sorry, sorry. Um, nepotism, his brother, his foreign minister. But we're trying to stamp all that out. Now, I shouldn't be surprised if they arrested him when he got back, with any luck. His brother is very sound. I was wondering if there's really any point in my seeing the ambassador if there's going to be a change. Please yourself. The trouble with my government, Mr. Bly, is you never quite know what is going to happen tomorrow. <gasps> Just a minute. Just a minute. Oh. This is Mr. Bly of Bly Constructions. He had an appointment with you for ten minutes ago. Oh, Mr. Bly. Uh, uh, just a few more minutes, if you please. In the throne room. Thank you. Excuse me? A disgusting exhibition. Ah, uh, it's not entirely confined to your diplomats. He's quite a nice fellow, really, but not a very bright. Hence this throne room nonsense. Through here. If you'd like to sit down, Mr. Bly. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> I have to stay with you in case you try to assassinate him. Not that I'd do a lot to stop you, actually. Would you mind standing? He likes this sort of tribal nonsense. <clears throat> he always reminds me of John Bird doing an imitation. I must tell you, you won't get much change out of him. But it should be very entertaining. Well, it's obviously going to be a bit more difficult to get into Africa than I thought. Oh, not necessarily. I shall be charged of affairs here from tomorrow, if you'd like to come and talk to me about it. See what I mean? You wished, Mr. Bly, for an audience with us? You want me to take the car on home? If you would, Don. And I'd be very grateful if you'd call in on Pamela and tell her that I won't be home tonight. I see. He also said he'd be back tomorrow evening in time to collect you for this do at the Italian Embassy. Yes, I suppose that is important. Well, I wonder what's on the telly tonight. Yes, well, I'll... Uh... You have to rush. Well, I expect Pamela... Have a drink. Be... All right, Pamela, a quick one. Oh, for God's sake, Don. Have a drink with me. Talk to me. Yeah? What time is it? Quarter to eight. You don't belong in there. You look very smart. Oh, very smart, oh dear, do I? Well, very good then. I didn't realize we were going out tonight. 
well, neither did I. We are not. John, you're terribly late. I said seven o'clock because I thought it would give us more time to talk. Now I have to go. Really? Where are you going? Darling, I said I was going out tonight. Oh, do you want a drink? Thank you. I asked you where you were going. I have no idea. I rather hoped it was going to be a surprise. And with whom are you going? A friend. Put your own soda in, would you? I do wish you'd come earlier, John, because I did want to talk Susan, to you. Susan, what the hell is all this about? Well... I tell you I want to see you, and then you make arrangements to go somewhere. No, John, I arranged to go out, and then you told me you wanted to see me. Surely I have some rights if I want to see you. Well, John, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I don't think you have any rights at all. I pay the rent. Oh, damn. That's my taxi. I'm sorry, darling. I'm as rough. Lock up after yourself, would you? Isn't it boring? Listening to other people's problems. No, not necessarily. Especially when you know all about them already. Well, I know that John isn't the easiest person to work with. And I was supposed to live with. You know, there's just one thing you've got to understand about John. He doesn't mean well. He just likes to tie up every problem as it occurs. And when he's tied it up, he forgets about it. Like me. Every now and then, I'm a problem to him. Tie it up, forget about it. You know, Dom, I had hoped that this business with Bank might have changed him. But it hasn't, not really. Of course, it may have changed me. That, of course, has not occurred to him. You're very quiet. I'm sorry, how rude of me. What are you trying to work out? I was miles away. Oh, gee, and that's just as rude, isn't it? Did you have some difficulty in getting out tonight? That's probably just about the size of it, isn't it? I'm single, I live alone, I earn my own keep. And I had difficulty in getting out tonight. I'm glad you wanted to. I think probably I've come to a junction in my life. Oh, no oh, oh. It's one of those that keep cropping up, don't they? Do you have them? Oh, yes. In divorce, for instance, is uh, quite a terrifying junction. Oh, yes, of course. And what's your junction? Well, I decided today that I wasn't really living my life at all. I was just letting it slosh around me quite without any direction whatsoever. When the tide goes out, I go out. When it comes in, I come in with it. With my job. It doesn't move me forward or sideways or anywhere. I just go in and do it. Is it a private life? Yes, and for that. Except, of course, it isn't really private and you can't do what you wish with it, is it? Then you must take action. You always take action when things look like jamming up. It helps no end. Which is what I intend doing. With your job or your private life? Well, I think I've taken the first step as far as my private life's concerned. Oh. What was that? I've established my independence. <laughs> it's never quite as easy as that, is it? No, but it's a start. I thought you weren't coming home tonight. Well, as it turns out, I have. I thought we had birthdays. It's very brave of you to come down. Very brave, especially as it turns out it wasn't. Are you coming to bed or are you just passing through? I'll be up later. See you for breakfast. She's probably gone out with a, that rather good-looking man I saw her having lunch with today. If it doesn't clash with a prior booking, I'd like to stake my claim for tomorrow. 
I'll give you lunch. You can give me an explanation. Get on with the Megalian ambassador. Oh, how did you know I'd been there? Your father told me you were going. Well, I'd say it was more educational than helpful. I have nothing venture. You know he's been recalled? Yes, I did discover that. I'm not giving it up, John. There's no reason why you should. We shall need all the contacts that you can make. One day? Yes. One day. Yes? Mr. Baggett is here to see you, Sir John. Sorry he couldn't make an appointment. Oh, um, show him in, will you? Well, I'll... Uh... You know Peter Baggett of the Treasury? No, I don't. You might as well stay and meet him. Hello, Peter, what brings you to the commercial end of the city? Just a passing way. You don't know Kenneth Fly, do you? Peter Baggett. How do you do? How do you do? I'm sure you want some coffee. Delighted. Miss Lingard, uh, would you bring in another cup, please? Yes, sir, John. Well, I'd better get back to it. Nice little match. Hope to see you again. Sit down, Peter. Thank you. All right, then, um, wave at me. Oh, it was really just a passing thought. Something you said. Something, uh, thank you. Something about if the NEB got extended powers, there might well be a massive withdrawal of support. Yes. Would you uh, take bets on that? Yes. Of course, if the NEB did get the powers, it wouldn't really matter if there were a withdrawal of support. It would have the statutory ability to do as it thought fit, support or not. Exactly. But it would be when it looked as though it were going to get those powers that the rot would set in. Have you any actual idea just how many people like yourself one could count on angrily to murmur rhubarb, rhubarb at appropriate time? Quite a few. I actually haven't counted heads. No. Do you think you could? Yes. Would be nice to know, wouldn't mm. it? Uh, nice chap, young Bly. Yes. Must be tricky, two managing directors. Do you see eye to eye? More or less. Except that uh, he wants to dash headlong into the dark continent. Oh, touch of the Cecil Rhodes, has he? I think it's much more touch of the Dr. Schweitzer's. I'm uh, more interested in Europe at the oh. moment. So it would be some time before you thought of returning to Africa. A couple of years or so, I should say. Interesting country, Africa. Mm. Well, I must away. Uh, thanks for the use of the hall. It's a pleasure. You must come again. I don't like the NEB's minister either. I've begun to think that you weren't coming. Oh, traffic. Do you want a drink? Yes, please. I rather think I do. And a cigarette. We might as well have all the props. It's your turn to say something. No. I think it's yours. A uh, large gin and tonic, please. I don't think I'm prepared to offer up explanations and excuses for myself. Very well. Let's order lunch. I can see I'm going to have to, aren't I? Yes, I think so, one day or another. Very well, John. What would you like me to explain? Where you were last night. Well... First of all, we went to that little Indian restaurant on the King's Road, and then, when we'd eaten, we went on to the Pig and Post, where we danced. The trouble is that neither of us is dead Neither of whom? Like me and the man I was with. And then we went for a walk in the park. Go on. His name is David Maine. Thank you. And I met him at the dinner that Caswell Bly gave. Well, we all have a lot to thank Caswell for. 
What are you going to do about him? What am I going to do about him? I'm not going to do anything about him. He's a friend of mine. If he rings me up and invites me out to dinner or for a drink, I shall go. If it's convenient. As with you. What do you mean, as with me? I mean I shall do as I damn well please. Do you think so? I know so. You have no more claim over me than David has, apart from habit. Now, tell me exactly what you meant by as with me. Simply that if I felt I owed you a fidelity that you were prepared to give to me, I would probably feel that I must give it to you. Since in neither of our cases does that actually apply, it's a piece of spurious sophistry even to argue about it. Which means that if I want to go out with you when you ring up, I shall. But if David rings up and I prefer to go out with him, then I shall do what I want to do. Really? Yes. What do you imagine that I shall be doing while all this is going on? I have no idea, but I think you'll have to give it some thought. I don't think I'd better stay for lunch. I'll be too late getting back. Would you like me to have dinner with you tonight? Talk about it a bit more? No, I'm going somewhere tonight. All right. Then I must go. You don't imagine that I'm not going to do anything about this? No, Don. You'll do everything you can to make me do what you want me to do. Has it occurred to you, apart from anything else, that I'm in a better position to help you than this, whoever he is? Don, we were talking about a love affair, not a business deal. All right. I'll ring you tomorrow. The squad dismissed? To discuss the mid-20th century feminine dilemma. Would you like to order now, madam? No, no, thank you. I'm And for you, sir? I'll have avocado, vinaigrette, and to follow. Hello? Hello, Kenneth. Is Justine with you? Um, no, she's been laid low by virus B2, whatever they call the common cold these days. Hello, Hello Kenneth. Uh, is John here? Yes, he's over there, winning enemies and influencing non-entities. <laughs> would you like a peanut? Not greatly. I would like a... Ah. Why is it one always drinks more at these places just because it's free when one can just as easily afford to drink much less at home? You know, I don't think that sentence means anything at all. It's called cocktail party conversation. Huh? Uh, sorry, where did you say John was? He's over... He's over there. No, I can't see him. Uh, I think I'll have a scout round. I'll see you later. Would you like peanut? Must be very enviable, you having your contract all sewn up, whilst all these others are busily chasing after them. Well, it's only reasonable, since I set the whole idea foot. I think the government had been very clever making you special envoy to the common market. If only I could believe it in what it was doing. Mm -hmm. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Fly. Oh, good. Look, there's someone here I think you must meet. Excuse me. Ah, um, yeah, excuse me. Yes. Now, this is Mr. Must Mr. say, I admire his single-minded pursuit of the emergent countries. Hello. Hello. Hello, Don. Hello. What are you doing here? Same as everyone else. My firm's after whatever's left to go for. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, if you excuse me, I think I'd better circulate. Fancy meeting you? Yes, fancy. Oh, I'm sorry, Pat. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Thank God. Pretty fit. And you? Very fit. You think everyone else knows what a healthy couple we make? I expect so. Last time I saw you, you didn't finish your brandy, if you remember. Yes, I remember. Oh, dear. Old friends should never meet when they're serving free drinks, should they? Yes, they should. Yes. Yes, they should. How's John? As always, standing with his back to me. In which case? In which case, ask me to have lunch with you. Will you have lunch with me tomorrow, Lady Wilder? Thank you, Mr. Hagener. I thought you'd never ask me. 
Well, we'll talk about that later. Okay? Right. Is your ambassador gone back yet? No, he leaves tomorrow. He delegated me to stand in for him tonight. Oh, where is he? He's gone to a strip club. <laughs> He has an insatiable interest in Northern European culture. I doubt if he can get enough of it. Um, if he's leaving tomorrow, I wonder if I could drop round and have a chat with you in the morning. Ah, in the morning I'll be taken up waving goodbyes to him. Why don't you come and wave with me? We can talk in the car. Hello, How are you? Hello. Am I intruding? No, of course not. Do you know, um, he's a <laughs> yes, bad Yes, indeed. I'm nice to Hello. see you again. Oddly enough, I feel a bit sad now that he's going. Do you think they'll arrest him? Oh, very likely. Not that it matters a lot. It will probably be house arrest and he very wisely built himself a superb house. <laughs> very far-sighted. It's more a case of the sad decay of power. In the long run, what use is it to one son? As your Mr. Macmillan wisely said, power is a Dead Sea fruit, as my poor ambassador will soon discover. <laughs> Excuse me, I must say hello to someone. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. What are you doing here? Saying my farewells, like you. Are you busy this afternoon? Ah, uh, so, so, why? Thought I'd drop round for a chat. I, uh, I hear you're interested in Africa. Yes. Very interested? Yes. Why? Well, put it like this. There are people who think it important that your company, or other companies, but among them your company, goes into Africa as soon as possible. Diplomacy nowadays is frequently done behind the spearhead of commerce, as with, for example, certain other large powers. If you are that interested in Africa, I'm sure you could be given every assistance. Really? Oh, undoubtedly. Perhaps you'd like to have a little chat about it. Yes, I would. Oh. See you this afternoon, then. Fine. Of course, one snag may be your splendid joint managing director. He doesn't seem to be so immediately interested, and time is a somewhat important factor. Do you think that's a snag you can iron out? Oh, I shouldn't worry too much. If he's not very careful, I won't give him Europe. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. Hello. Uh, do you two know each other? Yes, of, of course. course. Do, Come yes, on, we must be going now. Of course you met last night.